Welcome everybody, my name is Joshua Garcia and today we're going to be making some hard cider. Now I'm going to be doing this out of apple cider, like a, like a festive fall season cider. And you can pretty much buy like spiced apple cider in the stores, but we're going to be making it today at home. And even when this stuff is just hot, it's very enjoyable. And then once it cools down, we're able to ferment it into a nice cider beverage that really just encompasses the fall season altogether. Now for this, you can use any apple juice, uh, the plastic jug, store-bought, treetop, whatever, the uh, generic brand. Those are going to work great as well because you're really just you're spicing it and doctoring it up yourself. So any apple juice that you start with is gonna be fine because you're in control of what the final flavor profile is. However, if you have access to an unfiltered brand, that is great. This one I found at Whole Foods. I don't know if it's at every Whole Foods or just here in California, but this is gonna be a great option for you if you have access to it, if you can find it. And the nice thing about this is it comes in a one gallon jug that we can actually ferment in. So we're gonna be fermenting in this jug because the top will fit an airlock. And if you didn't even wanna add these spices and you just wanted to make something really simple, you could add a half a packet of yeast to this jug, maybe pour off a little bit to get yourself some extra head space, put the airlock on, go 48 hours, and you're done. You have some hard cider. Okay, so let's talk about spices. First up, we have our cinnamon sticks. And we're gonna be going about six to eight cinnamon sticks. You know, if they're longer, or thicker, all that stuff, then go with six. If they're smaller, shorter, then maybe do eight. Next up, we have cloves. And with these ingredients, it's better to go whole than ground. So I have whole cloves here, about half a tablespoon or four grams. Now, if you can't get any of these whole, here we have allspice and I do not have allspice whole, I only have it ground. So if you only have ground cinnamon or ground uh, cloves, that is completely fine. Just make sure you're going by weight instead of by tablespoon or anything like that because that's gonna be the best way to go. So this is actually one teaspoon, but if you're going whole, another half a tablespoon or four grams, either whole or ground. And last, we have the optional addition of brown sugar. Now, apple juice is already pretty sweet, so it doesn't really need the addition of sugar. But if we are fermenting and we want it to be a little bit sweet on the back end instead of dry, we should be adding a bit of sugar to help it out. But really, once you add the sugar, you can't take it out. So I definitely recommend adding your sugar at the end. A quarter of a cup of brown sugar should help with the flavor, but it might not be necessary. So mix all of your spices together, and we're gonna be boiling that and once you have a feel of how it's going to taste then decide if you want to add some additional sugar and it's best to add brown sugar maple syrup honey something with some extra flavor so we're not just increasing the sweetness without adding an additional layer of flavor on top of it but if you are looking for a dry cider you might not want to add any additional sugar and just let this go down on its own all the way to as dry as can be because then you will be working with somewhere between a 6 and 6.5 percent abv all right so i got my little hot plate here and a pot that's going to hold at least one gallon so first thing we're going to want to do is just toast up our spices ever so slightly so adding in our whole spices um, i'm going to go about Let's go with, what do I got there? Six, seven. We're gonna call it about seven pieces of uh, cinnamon. And then our four grams of cloves. And so those ingredients are gonna be sitting there on the bottom. And we're gonna just turn this up to a high heat and toast and move those ingredients around. That's just gonna activate the, the spices a little bit, bring out that flavor before we start boiling them. And so there we have it. These are all nice and toasty. I can smell them really well now. Um, a little bit of uh, smokiness starts rising up through the air. So we don't want them to get too smoky. We don't want to start smoking or burning anything. So as soon as you start seeing that, you can shut it off and you are good to go. And now all that's left to do is add the apple juice. And if you want, just for the sake of it, you can take a gravity reading of this apple juice. Just save a little bit so that you can uh, pull that number just so you know what you're starting with um, but you might need to do it again especially if you're adding sugar uh, at the end of the boil
Okay, so we just came up on our boil and everything is looking good. It smells terrific, so we are well on our way. We are going to kick this down just to a low simmer and we are gonna let that sit and taste it at 10, 20, and 30 minutes, pulling it off when we feel ready. Okay, and now we're here at the 10 minute mark. Everything is smelling great, looking great. So let's give this a quick taste. It's coming along really well. Definitely not too sweet. Uh, and I want a bit more spice. So I'm gonna set another 10 minute timer and we will check back at that moment. Okay, and now we are at 20 minutes. So this has been going really well. Hmm, even the color and just the way it looks is starting to change. So that's a good sign. There we go. Ah, I would say that is, I would say that's pretty much done. I could see a bit of maple syrup or brown sugar being really good here. Um, it's very spicy, it's very fragrant, but the sweetness has gotten lost. So if you are somebody who wants that sweetness, who wants a sweet drink, um, definitely pour in a bit of maple syrup or brown sugar. Um, I think I'm gonna keep it there and I'm just gonna enjoy one hot mug as it is now. And that should help as well because it'll give us a little bit of extra um, headroom when we go to ferment the cold batch. So enjoy a mug now, and then that's your headspace. Mm. Oh, give that a cool so I don't burn my tongue, but that is awesome. So. I'm gonna take this over to the sink and get this cooled down to a temperature that I can put it back in the glass jar. And I'm gonna sanitize this again. I feel like I should just sanitize it. So for this, you know, when it's like one gallon or something like that, you don't need a crazy amount of ice. And what I have is mm, a good two liter bottle that I've frozen overnight. So I'm just gonna throw this into the water and kind of help chill it down. All right, so there we go. Everything's all cooled down and in the bottle ready to ferment. Uh, I didn't realize that the stopper wasn't going to fit. Looking at the cap, it looked like it was gonna go in just fine and then it didn't. So <laughs> I'm gonna actually fashion a blow off tube. I'm gonna drill a little hole through here big enough for my 3 8 tubing put that in and then just run that tubing into a little bucket or bowl of water. And that's how we'll do the airlock for that. And let's see, we are at, we are at 13 bricks, AKA 1.052 gravity. And if we let this go all the way to dry, we might be all the way at a 7%. And this is tasting really good. I mean, right out the gate, I'm tasting the cinnamon, the apple. I mean, it's cider. It's really delicious on its own. Uh, make sure you're keeping an eye on it as well because this will ferment rather quickly. And if you want to save the sweetness, you have to stop it soon. So after 24 hours, give it a taste, check the gravity, see where you're at, because that's going to determine where you want to stop the fermentation. And on the subject of stopping fermentation, um, what you can do if you have nothing else is get this into bottles and then get it in the fridge so that the yeast slows down and stops producing the alcohol. But another option, if you can get it, is potassium sorbate, and that will freeze fermentation. So that will basically make your yeast inactive. So once you get down to the gravity and the sweetness that you're looking for, um, it's good to add some potassium sorbate and just stop the fermentation there. And on the subject of yeast, I am using champagne yeast, the EC111118. <laughs> I only did about a half package as well because we're doing about a gallon. Uh, it's really not recommended that you go a whole pack if you're doing anything under 2.5 gallons or two gallons, I would say. 
a lot of people use the US05 beer yeast for their ciders, so that works as well if you want to go that route. Using the US05, you might get a little bit of sweetness left over and be better off using something like that. So if you are going for a sweet one, maybe go with the US05, which is a beer yeast. Try out a few of them, give them a couple different shots and see what really works for you. But I'm really excited about this. It tastes great and I know that it's going to have a nice final product to it. So, you know, this is going to be great to to bottle up, throw in the fridge, and then on game day, Sunday afternoon, whatever it is, you can open up a cold one. It'll be nice, refreshing, but you'll still have that taste of fall. It'll be just, it's perfect for the season. That's what it is. It's really just perfect for right now. Go out there and give it a try. That's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Cheers.